Welcome back. Risk management is defined as the continuing process of identifying, analyzing, evaluating, and treating loss exposures to mitigate the adverse effects of loss. To discuss ways of reducing and managing risks, I am joined by risk management specialist, Emmy Pirko Mwandengi Martinez, who is a risk management professional with over 18 years of risk management experience in the financial and energy sectors at senior management level. Very good morning to you and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good morning and mm -hmm. thank you for having me. Much obliged. Let's perhaps start off with just breaking down uh, in very simple terms what risk management is. I mean, when I think about risk management, I thought it was just in insurance. <laughs> That's what comes to mind, you know, when, 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 risk, when I think about risk management, but just break it down for us. Yeah, um, normally when you talk about risk management, people always run to insurance as your first uh, point of call of risk mm -hmm. management, but in, it entails so much than just um, insurance. Because um, if we are talking from a business perspective, it's a structured process yeah. that you go through in analyzing the risks, aligning your strategy, your processes, your people, your technology, mm -hmm. everything that you need to run a business. Yeah. So you analyze those and link them together so that you can achieve your strategy at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But in layman's term, if we are taking it from our day-to-day -day activities, risk management is very, very easy and simple because even when I came here to the studio this morning, I have to do a risk management um, mm -hmm. process. And yeah. that's by looking at the car that I'll be traveling in, is it fit? Yeah. Um, the roads that I'm taking, will I be here on time? Um, I should avoid the roads that um, congested, congested mm -hmm. and the longer routes, I should take the shorter routes. So that's all about risk management that we do on a daily basis, but we are just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so why is risk management so important if you look at it from a, from a business perspective? Um, from a business perspective is creating value, mm. um, especially to the shareholder. They want to see the value in, in, um, in your business and to the um, investors as well. They want to know mm. why should they invest in your business and um, can you actually safeguard their investment if they invest in your business yeah. and what are the risks? Is there potential of them losing their investment mm. or is there a return for, for money if they invest in your business or in your country? Yeah. So it's very, very crucial that you have to implement your risk management strategies in your business in order to um, create um, shareholder value, to attract um, international investments mm -hmm. and also to build a resilient organization. Mm. Yeah. Would you say that risk management uh, practices change or do they remain the same? Are there certain principles of risk management that are forever the mm. casting stone, but then mm. there, there are, there's another aspect, aspect, for example, when we would go back a bit, looking at COVID-19, yeah. how would you say risk management changed then if you could just share experience, your experience in the way a business was being run? Yeah. Um, the principles of risk management remains the same, but as environment changes, so does your application of risk management in your organization. Yeah. When we talk about COVID-19, it came um, to many as a surprise, but what we have learned from that is that we have to build the resilience, yeah. especially when you are running your own business. And we have noticed that a lot of businesses have collapsed yeah. um, after COVID because they didn't build the resilience. Mm -hmm. They didn't um, manage their risks properly. Mm -hmm. But was there any way to be, yes. uh, any way to be prepared for COVID-19? I mean, <laughs> the yeah. world was brought to its knees. Was there any way that anyone could predict and say, oh, well, I was expecting COVID-19, so I was really ready. Yes, and when we look at Namibia, we were at an advantage um, because COVID started in Europe, mm -hmm. but with our mentality we thought it will never get here True. because europe is so far from us and we we didn't um, invest in contingency planning mm. because if you are running a business you have to look at all the scenarios of what if what if yeah. what if and that's the con a constant question that you have to ask as a risk management practitioner that what if some of the scenarios might uh, feel like um, they are far-fetched <laughs> like COVID-19 bringing yeah. the whole world to a standstill nobody expected that but then it happened when it happens it has a, um, a catastrophic impact Absolutely. on 
any business but if you are well prepared and you have your contingency plans in place you will be able to emerge victorious from from the calamity mm. so in other words uh, being a risk ma manager means you have to be an overthinker naturally yes you have, <laughs> definitely that's one of the things if you have to be a risk um risk management specialist mm -hmm. or practitioner you have to think outside the box yeah. in fact remove the box mm -hmm. there won't be any box you can think of scenarios that don't make sense mm. because that's um that's how you'll be able to identify emerging risks mm. um, and yeah. also when you look at um, the current situation and where the, your organization wants to go which is now your strategic focus for the next five years so for instance you need to able to be able to identify what could stop you from achieving your strategic objectives Mm. Yeah, and that's all futuristic. Mm. I like the fact that you made the example of how COVID started off in Europe and we thought that it will never reach us mm. because usually you do read about these things in the papers, you watch it on the news and you feel like, ah, that's far-fetched, it will never reach us. It's in China, it's in Europe, it's in, in, in America. Uh, but then it came to us. What do you think that needs to change in our psyche in terms of realizing that we're not living in isolation we're part of a broader global a global village what does it take for us to start thinking that hey this could actually happen to us and we we don't need to go through it mm. you know we can learn from another person's experience another country's experience to better prepare ourselves we um from a risk management perspective we need to have plans in place mm. Um, it doesn't matter whether it has occurred or it hasn't occurred before in, in Namibia. Mm. We just need to have plans and contingency um, or mitigating actions in place that will help us in case that materializes. Mm -hmm. And many a times when you tell people that, just be aware. We know that we, we never had um, a tsunami in Namibia, no. for instance. And we are comfortably building our, <laughs> our houses by the beach yeah. <laughs> and so close uh, in cl close proximity to the ocean it has never happened mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it will never happen mm. we just need to be prepared when it happens and when it happens it happens so sudden that it doesn't give you time mm. to to plan so you need to have your plans in place already now that if this happens this is what i'm going to do if it doesn't happen it's fine but it, if it happens you have a plan in place mm. yeah. there's always this comparison just last there's also this comparison between the private sector and the public sector now uh, i don't know if you saw that, that story that we ran where the ed of ministry of health and social services ben Nangobi was saying there is that perception that the private sector specialists you know perform better than the private than the public than their public uh, sector peers when we look at the risk management um, you know arena uh, would you say what what is it that can be learned from the private sector or vice versa in the way things are done um first of all it will be for uh, policy formulations mm -hmm. because if you have your policies in place and you have your action plans in place then you will never go wrong and um, public sector will perform exactly as the, um, the private sector. But it's also the mentality of us as practitioners, as employees and employers, that um, we don't take it serious. Mm. You wait until it happens for you to react. Yeah. And by then, it will be too late. But if you have your risk management plan in place um, that um, tells you in the next five years um, what is it that you want to achieve with risk management mm -hmm. you will be able to um, circumference some of these issues mm -hmm. and have them um, have your their backup plans yeah. in place yeah. instead of just waiting for it to happen then that's when you react mm -hmm. but at the same time within the, within the five year period also of course you also have to be uh, flexible in, in, because you know uh, circumstances change don't they yes of course mm -hmm. you have to be flexible and that's why risk management is a day-to-day -day, um, management of risks mm -hmm. it's not just a once-off tick box like a lot of people wants to to call it or an organization just comes up with a risk management policy in a plan because it's required by um, the name code or co good corporate governance yeah. that to show that no i have my risk policy no it's not about that it's about decision making day-to-day mm. -day risk based decision making mm. and that's the only way you will be able to take your organization to the next level 
level because you will be informed before you take a decision that what are the consequences of this decision, whether you take it take A or mm. B, you will know what the consequences are and which ones can you live with yeah. when you make that decision. Mm. So the takeaway here, I think, is uh, for me at least, is that the philosophy of YOLO, you only live once, does not prescribe to risk <laughs> management, does it? <laughs> it does and it doesn't because you, you have to look at all the consequences that yeah. are involved. Right. Sometimes you have to take a risk in order to yield more results. Mm. Sometimes you, you have to be risk averse in order to avoid the calamity of that decision. Yeah. So you, you are all forever weighing and, and you have to be analytical you have to to pay attention to the little details absolutely and your ears and eyes should be on the ground mm. because you need to know you need to hear what's happening and apply that immediately to your institution or the organization that you work for and think that how will this affect um, our objectives at the end of the day mm. yeah. Emmy, thank you so much for your time, and uh, once and once again, a very happy birthday to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> much obliged. Thank I you. hope you have a fantastic day. But mm -hmm. thank you once again for uh, educating about uh, educating us about risk management, and and, and everything that it entails. And hopefully, people at home have uh, walked away with something as okay. well. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, You're brilliant. Mm -hmm. You're watching Maybe Connect. We'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned.